Hey, hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another glorious company on Heroes 3 Casting. Yeah, let me go ahead and reset this video as watching it, you know, try to get an idea of what's going on. So in this episode, we're going to be going up against the rank 99 British player, yeah. And I know he's rank 87 USF. Luckily, I took a screenshot of his rank before it disappeared. And uh, yeah, I just decided to play Axis. I saw a lot of uh, Axis players complaining that I was full of shit in the comments, so I said, okay, let's go ahead and give it a try and see if I'm full of shit and I never touch Axis and I'm just really bad at the game. You know, I don't know what I'm talking about. But before we get started, hey, uh, something cool is happening. Um, this video where I do a German accent is blowing up on YouTube right now. I was like, oh, wow, that's awesome, man. It's on 96,000 views. It might hit 100K pretty soon. Um, but yeah, that was a year ago. So I know that a lot of I see a lot of people in my comments going Hey, I love the German accent. Hey guys, literally just give it a try. It's not gonna bite you I've got a ton of videos where I do the German accent Lucy, love, love what you did. What's the place? Looks, looks nice, nice. Not It's going to lie. been waiting 77 long years for this. You know what they say, say. The Third time's a charm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Literally, it's just all German accent. Also, the Shrek skit is, um... I'm not so bitchy. Yeah, you are. You and, you and the rest is that twink boy trash, trash poisoning, poisoning my, my perfect world. Now tell me. You know, I, I did that. That Just give it a try. You're gonna laugh. I promise you. If you're, make, if you're making comments going, I like the German accent, I've literally got a shit ton of videos where I do the German accent. But, uh, yeah, let's get started with the, uh... Uh... 1v1. But boom. Yeah, but what am I doing? Uh, replays. Uh, do, 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 do. Sorry, give it a second. There you are. Oh, also, we won a match against Twisted Tootsie the other day. He was a you know tournament level player in Co2, so that was pretty cool. Uh, but that was a 2v2. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to go ahead and take the engineers and prep the map, get some sandbags going, cap the right side of the map. I'm going to pump out a Ken Crad. You don't really need a Ken Crad anymore because the Grenadiers are just so aggressive and good at everything. I'm going to go ahead and make a kitten crab, though. I said, eh, let's give it a try. Uh, I am relearning how to play Veramok. You know, it's been a second. Uh, because it takes a long time to find a match in a 1v1 playing Veramok because everybody wants to play Veramok. Crazy, I know, right? Also, I've been seeing a lot of people writing six paragraphs. Bro, I promise you, if you're going to write me six fucking paragraphs, I'm laughing and smiling every second of the way reading that. Because when I see that shit at work on my break... I'm gonna, I, I just go to my friends and I'm like, dude, look at this shit. And we just like, you know, we're laughing. <laughs> Like, come on, bro. You're going to tell me, oh, I'm full of shit, blah, 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 blah. I don't, I, I mean, I'm going to read it because it's kind of funny, but at the same time, it doesn't hurt me because I have a life and I go outside and I go to the gym and I have, a, you know, I have friends. <laughs> but I promise you, uh, it just, it gives me a good laugh because it's like, dude, I went from not getting any comments on my YouTube videos to now I get views and traction and uh, reactions. The worst thing you could do is just not say anything. I mean, because that means I don't know if it's good or bad. But when you say it's bad, and I have all the other people saying it's good, it gives me a fucking good laugh. <laughs> so, <laughs> that aside, we're going to go ahead and set the MG42 up in mid. Uh, you know, getting some map presence going. Now, I can already see the person going, Yeah, you reacted to it, it bothered you. No, I, you're, for some reason you hate my video, but you're watching it. It makes no sense. Also, in this video, I'm going to prove to you that it's fucking easy to play Axis. Like, just turn your brain off. I wasn't even thinking the entire time. <laughs> I was literally like, oh, what do I do? So I see the Dingo Boys pushing in mid. I go, okay, Dingo Boys are in mid. I'm going to go left. I see the Engineers going left. I'm going to take off the spotting scope and just back out. Being aggressive with the MG42, uh, you know, being overly aggressive is a bit silly on my part. But again, no big deal. What I should have done is set it up in a way covering this angle, this angle. I didn't think he was going to push with the Dingo Boys. I thought he was going to go down south and go for the decap. That's on me. But again, no big deal. We can, you know, the retreat button is free. I see a lot of people get out flanked with their MG. They never hit the retreat button. I am going to take the kitten crad and push the fuel. You know, getting those nice little early game decaps. Uh, the dingo boys are going to press me in a 1v1. I do lose this engagement uh, because I have to fall back. But with the gr recent buffs to Grins, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of push the center of the map and decap. Get behind a sandbag and use it against them. Right side of the map, engineers are capping. So even in the early game, we are lacking on, you know, decent infantry. It's no big deal because we have the ability the ability to decap and harass his points, putting him all over the place. And there's the engineers setting up. I see his uh, Brit engineers, which are way better than mine. I'm going to go ahead and just hug the cap at the corner. Uh, stay away from him as much as possible and make sure I'm next to a house because when I'm inside the house, it allows me to stay in the game and not have to retreat. Now, his Brit engineers are oppressing me. Now, 
pause. I see a lot of players. Uh, the Royal Engineer section is just too hard to deal with. The retreat button's free. The retreat button's free. Go ahead and map it to your right mouse button or something. It's free. So I don't have to win this engagement. I can go ahead and back off and not stress about it. I, 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 a lot of players want to fight them for some reason. Dude, if they're a full four squad of engineers, go ahead and just back off if they close the gap and you don't feel like you're going to win the fight. It's no big deal. Because when I get my Pegrin squad out, as soon as I get the fuel, which I do now when I'm teching up, I'm going to win. MG's setting up. I see him putting out mines. I drop a model. He's going to go ahead and cancel those mines. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is awesome. He does take the high ground, and he's in green cover. That's why I'm going to lose this fight with the high ground advantage. The Dingo boys have been buffed. This is patch 1.6.1 hotfix. So my glorious MG42 is going to have to fall back to base. You know, oh, nine. It hurts so bad. Wow, that fence has duplicated itself. That's crazy. So Grenadier's going to go ahead and, you know, get behind these green sandbags. Because he is pressing me. He's going for the dirty decaps. He is, you know, attacking my territory. I don't want to uh, give up this um, manpower point too easily. The Grins have been buffed, and he doesn't want to press me because I think the Grins do better at close range than the Brits right now with their recent buffs, which is... Eh, it's, I, can, I can go ahead and be okay with that. Six versus five man models. MG42 is coming out of base. I'm going to go ahead and put it in a defensive position, covering the cutoff point, and I'm prepping my P Grins now. They're going to go ahead and build. There it is. And when these Pegrins pop into the field, you're going to see a huge power spike from me and, you know, a dynamic change of uh, map control over time. Kittencrad's backing off. I'm going to go ahead and take this Kittencrad, rotate to the left side of the map because I noticed the right side of the map's bogged down by infantry. No reason to lose this Kittencrad. No reason to press it for no reason, you know. Uh, I am going to go ahead and tech Minesweepers. I saw his Brits Engineers placing mines. I don't want to lose the Kittencrad, so we're going to use the Engineers to sweep the left side of the map and the Kittencrad to harass the left side of the map. Grenadiers are low, but still holding. No big deal. Pegrins are onto the field. I'm going to go ahead and press these uh, Brits uh, taking my fuel point. At the same time, with the Pegrins being onto the field, I will win every engagement pretty much from now on to the end of the map, infantry-wise. And it's ridiculous. Again, holding as long as I can. I thought there was more Dingo boys in the back. That's why I didn't rotate my MG. I am going to do that now. There it is, setting up. Max range shots into the infantry squad. We're going to go ahead and deny the decap which is, you know, great, it's amazing, because of the bleeding damage the MG42 is doing. Second squad of Pegrins out into the field. Uh, Dingo boys are going to go ahead and chase off my engineers, but we did what we the wanted to. We swept mines over here and out. allowed us to, you know, push out uh, territory-wise. Pegrins going to go ahead and press. In a second, using my glorious Axis superpowers, yeah! Now, uh, Relic Dev, go ahead and take notes real quick. Uh, on how to properly use Pegrins to attack engineers. Just go ahead and take some notes, buddy. Left side of the map, I'm going to go ahead and press the Dingo Boy, so it's a 2v2. But yeah, pause. So, I noticed that he's having a little bit of green cover with the sandbag. Now, are you taking note, Relic Devs? You see that? A little bit of green uh, cover with the sandbag. I'm going to go ahead and flank around and put myself in a tactically advantageous position, bleeding the engineer squad. Left side of the map, I'm just going to go ahead and run into the Dingo Boys because, you know, Pegrins fucking kick ass, baby! You know, there he is. He's gone. He's off the field. I'm going to go ahead and close the gap. I chase off the uh, British engineers on the right side of the map. I throw a nade to dislodge him. Are you taking notes, Relic Dev? Are you taking notes, John? And uh, with the P-Grins, I'm going to go run up on the uh, engineer... I'm sorry, on the British infantry section squad and just chase them away. Now, because I've swept the mines on this side of the map, I can move the kitten crad in. You know, free, uh, free will. Uh, and just do whatever I want to at this point. I don't really need the spotting scope because at this point, the only thing I'm worried about is a Humber around the, the six-minute mark because he's spamming infantry, which is no big deal. That's how he wants to play. I'm not going to judge him for that because, hey, I am Axis, and I can count as the infantry with my glorious Pegrins, yeah, because it's so hard to place the Axis. You know my Pegrins that are four models and should be easy to kill, but they're not. Oh, hey, look, an engineer squad. Hey, John, take notes, buddy. I'm going to go ahead and get behind the green, uh, you know, cover and bleed him at range. John, are you taking notes? There's the Humber. I should have backed the Kitten Crad out, but I wasn't paying attention because I was focused on the right side of the map. So I am going to lose. I'm going to take the Engineer Squad, not uh, get on the VP because he can see me and burn me down. We'll go ahead and prep the map and put mines everywhere. Pegrin Squad wins against the Engineers at medium range. That's crazy. Now, he is blobbing his units together, but watch what these Pegrins can do to these three infantry squads. Oh, I'm sorry, four infantry squads all together. Now, on the left side of the map, I'm noticing the Humber being overly aggressive. AT gun is moving in to defend the MG42. That's why I'm being a little bit cautious right now, not running my Pegrins in just yet. Leaving the Grenadiers here to buy time. I want him blobbed together before I do anything. And behold, 
Check out my glorious Pete Rents moving cover to cover. John, are you taking notes, buddy? Are you taking notes, John? Yeah, baby! I'm gonna go ahead and move the Pegrins in close range. Throw a nuke nade. I have. Uh, I'm about to take a shot into the Humber and chase it away. I'm getting ready to retreat the MG42. MG42 is covering the Brits in the middle of the map, allowing my flanks to be secure. There's the nuke nade about to pop off. Check that damage out. Oh my goodness gracious! He's too focused on the Humber, trying to get the wipe in the MG42. He's going to wipe it, but we can recapture it. One wipe on the British uh, infantry squads. I'm going to move the Pegrins into heavy cover. Backing off the low Pegrin, throwing a second nuke nade. Moving the Pegrins in to close the gap. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Why were these nades buffed? Somebody help me. Also hit the Humber in a rear armor shot, trying to get the AT gun to finish. It does not, unfortunately. But we are going to win this engagement. Yeah, and that's what I'm talking about. Pegrins are fucking easy to use. I uh, changed my mind. Light now, now I'm going to go ahead and just kind of scoot the AT gun up to uh, cover and watch the MG42. We don't want to lose this. 8 rat onto the field. I'm going to go ahead and defend the MG42 that has been decrewed. I do not want to. I do not want him to have it. This is very, very bad if I lose it. 8 rat onto the field. What does that mean? The Humber no longer means anything to me. I have a hard counter to the Humber. The Humber cannot kill the 8 rat in a one-on-one. -on -one. On Unless up. the 8 rat is half health. Engineers should have dropped the minesweeper, but I am sweeping the map, prepping myself again, being cautious. I'm going to go ahead and just wipe the uh, British infantry squad. Just watch this. Watch how uh, underperforming the 8 rat is that people say it's not really good. That's crazy. Look at that. Look at the glorious fatherland and the rounds that never miss the targets. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. You have made the Fiora proud, yeah? <laughs> So what am I doing right now? I'm making sure that the fuel that I decap on the left side of the map stays decap. One second. <coughs> Excuse me, coughing. <clears throat> yeah, I'm making sure that it stays decap. Sorry, I gotta make sure my mic's still working. Putting harassment onto the British engineers, and as soon as I chase them away, I'm gonna decap his manpower point. Because you know balance. Because this commander is an everything commander. Not only do you get a light vehicle that can decap the map and increase your map control, you also get access to heavy tanks and artillery countering any defensive doctrine i mean it's so hard to place the access right crazy sorry making sure my mic is still working and we're good to go but yeah that's that's what i'm talking about it's so hard to place the access i mean i'm moving half health pegrins onto the field because i'm gonna win i'm just gonna win now the grenadiers have been you know underperforming sadly they should be vet one by now but I be, I've been merging them into the Pegrins. But yeah, look, it's the glorious Fatherland. Even though I hit a mine, he knows he has to run because there's no nades on these guys. Even if he wastes his munis on the um, uh, snipe ability, I'm going to kick his ass, sadly. Now, I'm going to kite these units. You know, he can't really touch me. I'm going to keep this at max range. I'm going to go ahead and take the ki uh, 8 rad, put pressure onto the engineer squad. I'm being cautious. We're at 3 fourths health. The Humber can try to take me on a 1v, uh, 1v1 and we're not well supported and he is well supported with the uh, boys anti-tank rifles that was a panic at buy so nine minutes into the game he's had a heavy amount of map control what are we stressed about has he teched up to tier four or is he teching into storts to rush me down for a fast game so we're gonna go ahead and build an additional at gun moving our units back to get some health going and we've teched into medics finally allowing our peak friends to stay on the field increasing their lethality Rotating the 8 rad to, you know, cover and hover mid. D uh, blocking his ability to decap the point. This is why it's so powerful with this uh, raid package. You are able to harass the enemy point blank, stop the decaps, and just pressure your opponent. And it's not fair. Because, you know, it's a fatherland is struggling. What am I doing right now? Because the 8 rad, for some reason, has a light vehicle to knock down walls. I'm creating an fatal funnel for my opponent and giving my uh self vision so i'm able to just cover all this area without him attacking me at the same time i'm leaving this uh wall up for my opponent because it makes it hard for him to press me i get a natural divider and it's you know very relaxing for me so what did i see i see a lot of access players just kind of sit in the circle and take it when you see this from the humber this increases 15 percent damage towards your opponent if i got that right making it easier to kill and wipe you so, I'm going to take the 8 rad, that's my priority, back it out of the circle, we don't want any trouble. He's also giving me an indicator he's getting ready to push. Okay, cool. You know, use that to your advantage. Yeah, he's about to attack me, but at the same time, let's go ahead and move our key unit out of the fucking fatal funnel, the fatal circle, repair it with the engineers, bring back our, you know, deadly pegren squads for the glorious fatherland onto the field, and, uh, you know, I'm going to keep the 8 rad within range of these AT boys and just bleed him. I mean, look at the damage, man. It is absolutely broken, but, you know, it's so hard to place the axis. So, what do I see right now? 
I notice this vehicle, you know, burning up and on fire. It gives me an indication he's about to press. AT gun is set up and ready to go. I do have an additional AT gun covering the right side of the map. MG42 is getting pressured, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it there because we have reinforcing squads coming in. I'm going to take these two Pegrins and eventually kill these uh, anti-tank squads, you know, giving my 8 rat a little bit of breathing room. And I have a snare squad on standby to snare that Humber. Focus the Humber with their snare squad, if anything. We can always clean up the store later on. Stuart does get a shot into me, but no big deal. I'm going to go ahead and snare this uh, vehicle because of the extended range. AT guns are cranking out, get it down to a sliver of health. At the same time, rotating my AT guns as hard as I can. Unfortunately, it is not working. Eventually, I get my head out of, the butt, out of my butt and take the p grin squads and focus the anti-tank boys. I'm taking the AT guns. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this one left. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this one right, catching these guys in a, um, in a deadly uh, entrapment. There we go. 8-Rad is about to die. I'm desperately trying to kill the Stort. I'm being very cautious with the Humber, you know, because it can out-DPS me. I do get the kill on the Stort with the AT gun rotating to the left. I am trying to take this one and rotate to the right. I get really greedy. I should have taken the 8-Rad and ran away, but I thought I could DPS this thing before it can uh, knock me out of the game. So Pekrins do get the wipe. Uh, don't worry, we are going to clean up the Stort. What I'm going to do is just you know, take these AT guns and put it in a little bit of a crossfire. And there it is, an overlapping arc. Pegrins are rotating to the right side of the map because this fight is over and these guys are about to pop their snare. So even if we can't kill with the AT guns, we do have a snare option on standby. MG is still standing tall, standing proud. We have held the line for the glorious fatherland. And you know, just chilling. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Just wiping everything because it's so easy to place the axis. Now, he is going to go ahead and build a mortar. What I should have done is made my third Pegrin squad, but I was being overly cautious because he had been infantry spamming so hard at this point. I didn't want to make a mortar. I thought it might have been useless at this you know, stage in the game because I was worrying, worrying about more infantry just rushing out. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and make a, an additional MG42. What I should have done is taken this AT gun and killed the sandbags. The reason why I haven't done this is because AT guns were having trouble tag targeting sandbags in the past, but because this has such a huge... Um, hitbox i'm gonna go ahead and knock it down removing his ability to stay in the middle of the map and allowing my mg to suppress him for uh, later portions of the portions of the game and there it is at gun's gonna go ahead and crank out takes about three shots to kill this uh you know sanger wall and i should have done this a long time ago i'm still trying to get used to the code 3 setup and changes now this is again patch 1.6.1 a hot fix so the Dingo Boys do have a little bit more DPS before I see Axis players go. I bet this is not even the most recent patch, yeah? Pegrin's going to go ahead and pop their sprint ability and just look at that. With the 15% reduction in damage, the engineers don't touch me. I see his Bray MG setting up. I go, oh crap, I'm going to go ahead and get snared. I am going to back off in a second. But with my additional Pegrin squad, you know, pulling up from the rear, I'm going to go ahead and hide behind this building and use them as a Bushwookie squad. And just waiting for him to push any time in the game. And there it is, Brit, um, Brits have, you know, stayed behind the heavy cover. I'm going to go ahead and throw a nuke nade. Wow, look at that damage. Look at that underperforming nuke nade that they recently buffed because I don't know why at this point. Grenadiers are capping the left side of the map. My opponent is not done yet. We are still even Steven on the kills. We're still even Steven on the uh, VPs, basically. So we're, we're still going to take him seriously. He's still a threat at this point in the game. But because of the most recent um, buffs to the Axis, it's super cheap to tech up the Tier 4. I'm going to pump out a Panzer IV as soon as possible. Because I was worried that he was teched up to Tier 4. So I want to make sure I have some kind of solid anti-tank counters ready to go. And because of his commander choice, he could be going Archer, which would you know basically slaughter my broom bar. I see him planting mines. I'm going to go ahead and whip out the mines, whip out the mine sweeper keeping me into this game double mgs are set up i've got multiple overlapping arcs of fire he cannot press me in mid he has been forced off engineers are going to go ahead and focus the mine sweeping you know we can decap anytime we want but luckily we don't have to be on top of the mines to sweep him our mine is still set up for the future and just everything's looking good there's a nuke nade going off i detonate his mines i get very lucky i'm gonna go ahead and back off again no big deal we just love tap the mine we have plenty of manpower we're not in a stressful situation whatsoever because you know how easy it is to play the axis I mean, i'm gonna say this all game look at just it's so fucking easy i literally just turned my brain off this entire match there's the uh, mg setting up i'm gonna go ahead and attempt to launch a nuke nade on him i see him retreat i go okay no point i'm gonna take the 
British, I'm sorry, I'm going to take the Grenadiers and decap the British uh, cutoff point, denying him a plus 10 fuel, and again, just, you know, making it a living hell for him on this map. I see the MG setting up, I'm going, okay, let's go ahead and throw a nice little uh, nade onto it, and watch the Axis nade. Oh, hold on, BAM, son! That was the standard nade for the, uh, you know, Wehrmacht infantry, and just look at that damage. Now, I attempted to get the cutoff point, I did not, no big deal, I'm taking the engineer squad, sweeping the right side of the map. Uh, you know, I'm gonna push these, put these PRNs into ambush position, make them little bush wookies, literally bush wookie squads, hiding behind the bushes, waiting for him to make a move on me. MG setting up, and just our we're just in a great position right now because our Panzer IV is about to pop sooner or later. My opponent does get the Archer out into the field. The Archer is a great, great, great anti-tank option. The problem is he's just being so passive with it; it doesn't bother me whatsoever. Pegrin's moving in. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, cock block the cat, put my pinky toe in, throw a nuke nade onto that, and he is gone for the, you know, can't touch me. He's like, nine, I don't want that nade, please. I'm not ready for it. And I'm like, yeah, prepare your backside because I'm the backdoor That's wrangler. Yeah. <laughs> Panzer four into the field. You know, German superiority at this point in the game, I, I just don't know what to do. This game was literally created to please the Axis faction and everything. It's glorious. You can't touch me. You can't stop me when I play Axis. I mean, look, look at this. Look, look at this. Look at this shit. Engineer's going to back off. He is trying to get a dirty white, but Panzer IV comes onto the field, chases him away, and like, what? You thought I was unsupported? Silly Billy. And, oh, look at that damn, oh my goodness, I'm trying to get the dirty wipe on this guy. MG42 set up, I'm going to have to go ahead and retreat it. We're, we are losing this fight due to a mortar. I get very, very lucky and, you know, uh, prevent myself from losing the uh, MG. I take a nice little pot shot into this uh, British MG, Vickers, and, uh, you know, drop two models, miss the second shot. He does reveal that he is a archer at this point in the game. I go, okay, I don't want any smoke. I've dropped down to three-fourths health. We're going to keep this tank as a supportive unit to defend our lines and just chase away infantry squads because we're already on five kills and this thing just fucking popped out into the field Ability unlocked. we're in no stressful situation with the archer that also tells me i have time to uh fuck around and um you know i can make our an artillery Reactor unit because that tank costs 100 fuel that means he's the latest tech op option that allows me to pump out even more armor later into the game we have time options, and we're just cheesing. Pegrin's popping the sprint ability. He's going to go ahead and hit my mines because he saw it and he panics. I'm going to go ahead and get my fuel back because I'm like, fuck around and find out, bud. Now, I'm not being rude to my opponent. That's just the way I talk. The guy was super respectful. I have nothing negative to say to him before somebody goes, you're just the mean person, and you're just bullying me, and I can't take it anymore. <laughs> I don't care. Now, Pegrins are setting up in the middle of the map. I'm sorry, left side of the map. Getting the decaps, dodging his mortar. You don't have to sit there and take it. And staying at extended range away from his Brits. And we're just getting this massive Enemy amount of map control. Because he can't fight my infantry in a 1v1. You've seen four squads get chased away. I mean, somebody justify this at this point. How is this fair? It's not fair. And none of this is fair. It's just kind of like cheesy and easy. So I'm going to go ahead and dive him. He goes, he has two MGs. I go, okay, well, eventually you're going to fuck around and find out, and I'm going to find an opening on you. So what I'm going to take these Pegrins is rotate to the left side of the map because these guys were just kind of holding his bait. I'm going to go ahead and move the Panzer IV in a little bit. I do get a West because he's being overly defensive. And that's what I was saying. I have time to fuck around and play around with this build because with my Tier Four tech up, while he does not have Tier Four, I, I can... Go ahead and get artillery, barrage the static positions, keep the Panzer IV supportive because this is only going to target my tanks and rush my infantry, and it's a win-win. It's a win-win situation. Pegrins moving in. I'm going to go ahead and get behind the heavy cover and just watch what these Pegrins can do. You know, at close range, they're just tearing them up. I do see his truck getting fuel. I, I look. This truck is worthless. The best thing you can do using this commander, go ahead and make a cheap um, uh, cash right. Because this truck costs about 250 manpower, I believe. I could be wrong. 200 to 250. This cash costs only 125 and lasts you however long you can keep it. And he would have gotten a shit ton of fuel more so than this truck. All right, tactical pause gone. I'm, you know, burning down this British infantry squad, trying to get the wipe. I am going to go ahead and get the kill. Boom, and it's gone. Engineers are moving in, trying to force me out. And just look at that. Bleeding him heavily. I move the Panzer IV into support, keeping it nearby. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, attempt to wipe these engineer squads. And hold it, hold it. Do get the wipe on the engineer squad. Archer is set up, you know, putting shots on my Panzer IV. Again, keeping it supportive. We don't have to be aggressive. I'm gonna go ahead and take these Pegrins behind green cover and melt this MG. I am gonna win this engagement, even at half health. Uh, behind the green cover, we are gonna win because he is just too close to me. So it doesn't matter if he has an MG. Archer has again revealed itself, but we don't have to stress about the Pegrins. We end up dropping two models, but the Pegrins are going to win. I mean, because of the recent buffs at medium range, they're just unstoppable. Right side of the map, Grenadiers are just decapping. We're not going to win this fight, but we are going to harass his resources. My uh, engineer is going to go ahead and repair my Panzer IV. Middle of the map, we do have the Wesp on standby that has been taking pot shots into the MGs. It's going to get even better over time. Panzer IV, uh, being a, a bit overly aggressive, but I feel comfortable with its health and with my map control. I feel like he has not teched up whatsoever. And by seeing that truck, I go, he's desperate for fuel. Archer is trying to take a shot into me. I'm going to go ahead and just back out, moving the ATs into support to put pressure onto the Archer, you know, chasing it back further into base. I notice he has an AT gun. I go, okay, we got to be very defensive with this Panzer IV now. He's moving his Dingo boys, and I'm like, that's a very dumb choice, man. But hey, you do you, boo boo. Pegrin's back onto the field. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get a third Pegrin squad in a little bit. Let's give it some time. What I'm going to do with these AT guns is just roll them back to base and heal them up, I believe. Because we have all the cards in our hands right now. MG42 is covering the right VP. We hold the center VP easily with an additional MG42. And the left VP is never going to touch as long as he, you know, he's trying to gain his fuel back. Dingo boys are going to win because I have a sliver of health left. <laughs> and I'm at range. <laughs> I do hit a mine. Uh, or maybe that was mine, mine getting detonated. I'm not sure but no significant damage whatsoever i am doing what i like to call prepping the map i have all this map control let's go ahead and prep it in our favor get some mines down everywhere because we are floating a little bit of munitions and you know make it work for us my wesp is opening up right now i'm putting it wherever i see a mortar unloading onto me and we're doing you know uh, a little bit of bleed damage but this is worth it because this constantly pushes puts pressure onto my opponent and he's down to nothing but support weapons at this point in the game. And again, just being stationary, being cautious, but not stressing. I do have spotting scopes in the Panzer IV, so I'm constantly reconning, reconning him. And he can't do anything about it. And by the way, he's been playing. I know he likes to rush down the middle and, you know, charge me. So I'm putting mines, again, everywhere. And anywhere I can kind of anticipate his path. So what did I do? And this is why I've argued this is not fair. I had three squads of Pegrins. I wanted my fresh squad to be Vet 1. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go Officer Quarters. This also, this is why I have a problem, buffs the West, giving me Veteran C1, reduces barrage times, allows me to put even more pressure onto my opponent at this stage in the game. Pegrins are moving in. I feel confident. I'm using them as a scouting squad. I want to go ahead and spot his um, machine gun. That's why I'm baiting. So let's go ahead and take the reveal all map off. And I'm going to show you why this Wesp is nasty. Nasty. I'm moving it into max range, being a little bit silly, but it can take the damage. And just watch this shit. Just watch these Wesp shots. Absolutely ridiculous. Boom. Half health on the mortar. Hitting the MG again, bringing it to half health. That's the second shot into the barrage. Wesp hits hard onto the MG, dropping into three models and a quarter of health. And the last shot forces the MG off. I'm about to get the wipe in a second, and it's gone. That one MG deleted, yeeted, and gone, putting even more manpower pressure onto my opponent. Left side of the map, he sets up an MG. By the time the archer gets here, I'm going to roll out. I've also gotten a bit of an indication that his archer has not been repaired. He's not risking anything. At the same time, I'm getting ready to tech up into my panther knocking him out of the game what i would have done is just sacrifice the grenadier squad at that point opening up the panther to me and allowing me to just decimate him but we're not going to make it that long into this game let's go ahead and turn the reveal all off select the player only and just it's just ridiculous man and i just kind of wanted to make this video because players are just screaming and mg42 is dead just, just i'm sorry Vickers is dead this it's, i'm stuttering it is disgusting how easy it is to play axis in this game there should be some kind of challenge. I, I mean, something at this point, but this is ridiculous. And he surrenders. It's over.